There are a lot of fantastic factors about shonen anime. The action, the drama, the animation, the antagonists, the main cast, and so on and so forth. But one of the most iconic aspects of shonen has to be the transformations. Everyone lost their minds over Dragon Ball Z's Super Saiyan transformations. We have moments such as Gon turning into adult Gon to fight Neferpitu, Ichigo's holification, Asta's devil form, and naturally the biggest shonen anime of all time, One Piece, is gonna have some transformations too. But One Piece is quite different from other shonen in the sense that despite it having battles, it's not exactly a battle-oriented story. You never suggest someone watch One Piece because of its action, you do it because of the story, the rich lore and world building that comes along with it. At its core, One Piece is an adventure drama series, not a battle shonen. Naturally, the greatest transformation in One Piece is Luffy getting to Gear 5, and it's highly tied into the lore of the story. While the transformation is acquired in a mainstream manner where the main character dies and comes back to life stronger than ever before, it never feels overdone or corny because of the plot twist and lore drop that Gear 5 brings with it. Luffy's power set is revealed to be something far different from what we knew. His devil fruit is revealed to be different from what we knew. In fact, the course of the story changes to a certain extent. So why exactly does Gear 5 do that and how is Luffy's anatomical alteration affecting the plot to such a great degree? Let's explore that in this video. Luffy's Devil Fruit, the truth about Luffy's abilities. Let's start with what Devil Fruits actually are based on the information that Oda's revealed. It's believed that Devil Fruits are physical manifestations of human desire, stemming from hopes and wishes such as, I wish I could have a body that turned into fire, or if only I could turn into a phoenix. It's been theorized that they grow on a tree located on an unknown or mysterious island. It's highly possible that, like Luluja, the island has long been destroyed by the world government, or rather, Emu, using an ancient weapon or the Mother Flame. Following this, the fruits were scattered all across the world. Now, coming to Luffy, from the very beginning, we were aware of him having the Gum Gum Fruit or the Gomu Gomu Nomi, a Paramecia-type devil fruit which alters the physiology of its user into that of rubber. On the surface, it's a very simple fruit without extraordinary powers. Paramecias are also a more common type of devil fruit, unlike the rare Logias, which alter the bodies of the users to a powerful element, such as the ones possessed by the Admirals. Paramecias do get stronger once the fruit is awakened and acts somewhat similar to Logias in the sense that the user gets the ability to alter the matter of their surroundings into the matter of the fruit. For example, Doflamingo was able to turn his surroundings into strings that he could control, and accordingly, an awakened gum gum fruit will turn all of Luffy's surroundings into rubber that he can control. Although this part isn't far from the truth, everything we know about the fruit is pretty much inaccurate. It's not until Wano, after Luffy dies fighting Kaido, that we learn more about the true nature of his fruit. Never was it actually a paramecia. Known as the Hitohito Hito no Mi, or the human-human fruit model Nika, Luffy's fruit originally was a mythical zone type, the rarest of the rarest of all devil fruits. The name Nika refers to a mythical warrior in the One Piece world who was revered as the sun god. He was the warrior of liberation who was very joyful, laughed all the time, spread happiness, and freed slaves. For this reason, it's believed that he was worshipped by the slaves since ancient times. Whether Nika truly existed or not remains unknown. It's possible that since the slaves wanted to be free, they found hope in the stories of a joyful warrior of liberation who freed them from their misery. He became known as the Sun God, and he brought freedom to those who needed it, and, in a way, brought them out from the darkness and into the light. With people wishing for such a being, a devil fruit was manifested, which became the mythical zone human-human fruit model Nika. Nika's body exhibited the properties of rubber, and as he was free. Because of this, he could stretch as far as he wanted to with no inhibitions, do whatever he imagined, alter his surroundings into rubber, and fight however he wished. With such a will being manifested into a devil fruit, it became known that this fruit gave its user access to the most ridiculous power in the world. The power of this fruit takes direct inspiration from Western cartoons, where we see eyes popping out of a character's skull, stars circling around their heads when they take a massive hit, and basically characters being able to defy the natural laws of physics. Often used for comedic purposes, this is known as Toon Force, or cartoon physics. By extension, Luffy's fruit doesn't exactly revolve around him having a rubber body, but his access to the Toon Force. The rubber body is simply an extension of Nika's and the Devil Fruit's powers. When Gear 5 was revealed, we witnessed a memorable scene taking place at Marie Joie's Pangea Castle, where the Gorosei mentioned how zone-type Devil Fruits had a mind of their own. Since the Void Century, or over the last 800 years, the world government, no matter how much they tried, couldn't get their hands on this fruit, and it was almost as if the fruit was avoiding them. During the Void Century, 
Joy Boy was the user of the fruit, making him something of an incarnation of Nika as he brought people joy and liberation. Because his goal to free himself and to free others aligned with the devil fruits, the fruit chose him. 800 years after the fall of the great ancient kingdom, the fruit chose Monkey D. Luffy as his user. While Luffy isn't Joy Boy himself, several characters such as the robot Emmeth and the Zo Kingdom elephant Zunisha believed Luffy to be Joy Boy after seeing his Gear 5 form, as the visual design of the transformation made him uncannily similar to Joy Boy in terms of appearance. Luffy also happens to have a D in his name, and those belonging to the D clan are known as the enemies of the gods. The gods here refer to the likes of the Gorosei and Imu, with Marijua being known as the land of the gods. While the absolute truth about the D clan remains a mystery, it's believed that the name is possessed by those who have inherited the will of Joy Boy, who had made a promise that he would achieve what he set out for 800 years after his passing, as he had been beaten by the very world government that was formed to defeat him in the ancient war during the time of the Void Century. Based on this, with Luffy possessing the D in his name and having an innate desire for freedom, he became the prime candidate and was chosen by his Devil Fruit to be the next user after Joy Boy himself. What is Gear 5? Every Devil Fruit has to be and can be awakened for the user to realize its original potential. Naturally, an awakened Devil Fruit is far stronger than its unawakened version. For Luffy, this awakened version is known as Gear 5, where most of his clothes and hair turn white, a smoke cloud manifests around him, and the insides of his eyebrows take on a slight swirl pattern, kind of like Sanji's. Such swirl patterns are also visible on Devil Fruits, and it's been revealed by Oda that swirls are important to the role of One Piece, but just like many other things, its significance significance remains a mystery. Prior to Gear 5, Luffy had roughly displayed three other forms apart from his base form, namely Gear 2, Gear 3, and Gear 4, with Gear 4 having three subparts known as Bounce Man, Tank Man, and Snake Man. In these three gears, Luffy alters his bodily composition to strengthen himself, in a way trying to force an awakening without actually awakening his Devil Fruit or using the awakened version of his fruit. For example, in Gear 2, Luffy speeds up his blood flow using his rubber body, providing more oxygen and nutrients to himself. This heats up his body and makes him physically stronger and faster. He uses Gear 3 to blow individual body parts up like a balloon, often seen blowing into his thumb to enlarge his fist. In Gear 4, he coats his rubber arm with armament hockey and then blows into it. He can often use more than one form at once. Once he attains Gear 5 or awakens his fruit, he can get all the amps he had from the previous three gears without actually having to go the extra mile for it, allowing him to selectively or completely enlarge his body parts at will with or without hockey. He's also far stronger, faster, and more durable than ever before, all while being able to turn his surroundings into rubber and using cartoon physics to fight. While Luffy's body emits steam in Gear 2, he gets a faint cloud ring around him in Gear 4, proving that the gears are a type of forced awakening of the fruit, which is truly fulfilled by the time he reaches Gear 5. Luffy attains this form after he dies fighting Kaido in Wano. What unlocks Gear 5 is the heartbeat, as it switches from the standard heartbeat to a rhythm known as the the drums of liberation. This is the rhythm of Joy Boy's heartbeat, and allegedly, Nika's heartbeat. When Luffy dies, his heart stops beating, which is what his body needed to reboot and change his heartbeat from the normal human rhythm to the drums of liberation. Once that happens, Luffy awakens his fruit and attains Gear 5, proving that he needed his heart to stop beating first for the reboot to take place. The sound of the drums of liberation alerts Zunisha, who then claims that Joy Boy has returned. Once Luffy transforms, he acknowledges that he can now fight exactly the way he wishes to, with him being much more joy-loving than ever before and having all the freedom in the world when it comes to his movements or the manipulation of his immediate surroundings. Naturally, he refers to this as his peak. How Luffy uses Gear 5 in battle and his absolute tomfoolery. Well, Luffy's fruit is a zone-type fruit, part of its awakening works similarly to a paramecia's, in the sense that the user can turn their immediate surroundings into the element of their body. Doflamingo could turn his surroundings into strings that he could control. The same applies to Katakuri's mochi abilities. Going by this, Luffy can turn his surroundings into rubber, making the physical space around him bouncy enough for Luffy to use it as his personal trampoline and for his opponents to suddenly find themselves on a bouncy, rubbery surface instead of a solid one. By extension, anything that Luffy touches can be turned into rubber and molded the way Luffy sees fit. For example, during the fight between Gear 5 Luffy and Kaido, we watched an enlarged, gigantified Luffy grab a lightning bolt from the sky and throw it at Kaido. And it didn't stop there. Luffy played with the lightning, moving it around like he moves himself in his Gear 4 Snake Man form as he manipulates the now rubbery lightning to encompass Kaido, who gets caught up in Luffy's ridiculous attack. Maybe that's why Snake Man Luffy 
Yeti moved the way he did with his straight and zigzaggy pattern, as his previous gears could somewhat emulate the abilities of Gear 5 since they're forced awakenings, after all. When Kaido does manage to land a punch on him, Luffy falls back into the rubber lightning bolt and uses the momentum of the stretch to throw himself back into the action. Throughout this battle with Kaido, we also see Luffy laughing constantly, which fuels his toon force. The hits he lands on Kaido causes stars to appear over the latter's head. These stars aren't present for effect, but they actually manifest in the verse and exist in the reality of One Piece due to Luffy's abilities. We see Luffy's eyes popping out constantly, like he's in a Tex Avery or Looney Tunes cartoon. The same applies to Kaido's eyes after he takes certain hits from Luffy. He can even run with his legs looking like that of Roadrunners, and he can apply the same physics to his arms. When he takes a hit from Kaido's mace, instead of being blown away, his face stretches over the mace and takes on the shape of the spikes, as he's just completely rubbery. Overall, the animation style and sound design has become extremely cartoonish, but instead of it just being an aesthetic choice, it can be said that such things are truly happening in Luffy's reality. With respect to the ground around Luffy bouncing, Luffy tanks one of Kaido's blast breaths but raises the rubbery ground and uses it to deflect Kaido's attack back at him. At some point, Kaido swallows Luffy whole, and the latter goes on to use the inside of Kaido's long dragon form as a big slide. He moves around inside, with his abilities turning the insides of Kaido's body into rubber. He blows himself up into a balloon, causing Kaido to swell up, and he manages to force open Kaido's mouth as Luffy latches onto his nostrils, allowing him to escape. Eventually, a gigantic Luffy, far bigger than Kaido's huge form, grabs the Yonko and uses him as a jump rope mid-air. Several times, we see flickers of fire generated by Luffy's body, which can be an extension of his Gear 2 abilities, where he heats himself up. This heat, used in combination with other attacks from other gears, has previously allowed him to generate fire during attacks such as Red Hawk and Red Rock, emulating Ace and Sabo's Fire Fist. Combined with that fact, Luffy is immune to fire attacks even if he gets charred by it, which alludes to Nika being the Sun God and Luffy having the same body as that Sun God. When it comes to body modifications and gigantification, Gear 5 Luffy has absolute control over his entire body, as seen from scenes where he manipulates his upper body into a muscular form and chants Muscle Muscle or Moogie Moogie. In fact, the first thing he does after he gets Gear 5 is to blow up his hand much larger than we ever saw in Gear 3. He then rams his fist into the building where Kaido is, grabs him as if he's a snake, and pulls him out. His attacks are also amplified by the usage of Armament Hockey and Advanced Conqueror's Hockey. These abilities are combined in Luffy's final attack against Kaido, the Badrang Gun. The name of the attack takes inspiration from the Hindu god Hanuman, an ape who's half human and half monkey, with Hanuman being known as Bajrang Bali. Luffy's character also takes inspiration from the Buddhist deity Sun Wukong, or the Monkey King. As we know, Luffy bears the name Monkey and wants to be the King of the Pirates. His moveset with a rubbery body also emulates how a monkey can move, but obviously on a whole different level. Back to the Bajrang gun, with this attack, Luffy enlarges his fist to the size of Onigashima, which is a massive, massive feat. This fist is coated in armament and conqueror's hockey, and its size is the reason and why Luffy asks Momonosuke to relocate the island as it can destroy Onigashima. It has some elements of Gear 4 as well. When the attack lands on Kaido, the Yonko is defeated as he's sent down to the depths of the earth and into Magma, not too long after Law and Kid sent Big Mom to the same place. The next time we see Gear 5 again is in Egghead, where Bonnie points out Luffy's transformed white form is much different from how he normally looks. Luffy tells her it's the appearance he acquires when he's the most free. To top that off, we see Luffy gearing up to that form by changing his heartbeat from the normal human rhythm to the drums of liberation, which leads to his transformation with a burst of his conqueror's hockey. He fights an awakened Rob Lucci at first, who he bodies pretty quickly with his unbelievable strength and speed. While Gear 5 is a form that brings joy, laughter, and hope to others, Luffy's opponents always perceive his onslaught as something dangerous, which is confirmed by them visualizing Luffy looking dangerous as he closes in on them with his red, glowing eyes. After Rob Lucci, Luffy fights Admiral Kizaru and Saturn. At one point, an enlarged Luffy grabs them both, with each opponent in one fist, and uses his next attack, Gumo Gumo no Booming Dawn symbol, to smash them together, turning them into flat, circular structures like symbols. He spins the flattened Saturn and Kizaru on his fingers while stars form around their heads. In each gear, Luffy changes the suffix of his attack. For example, base Luffy would use the term Gumo Gumo no Gatling. Gear 2 uses the term Gumo Gumo no Jet Gatling. Gear 4 uses Kong Gatling and Gear 5 uses Dawn Gat. In each instance, the suffix refers to the ability of his form. As Gear 2 specializes in speed and heat, Luffy uses the term Jet. Gear 4 is about immense power, 
so Luffy uses Kong. And Gear 5 is the sun god finally bringing the dawn to the people after 800 years. In fact, the very first arc of One Piece is known as the Romance Dawn, so the named Gear 5 attacks play on that word. When the Gorosei Saturn launches balls of venom, Luffy grabs a tree and, like a cartoon character, quickly nibbles it down to the shape of a baseball bat. Then, he manifests a bucket of pain and helmet out of nowhere, paints the bat, and writes down the number 56 on them, and then uses the bat to deflect Saturn's attacks. The bucket of paint and helmet appear as a result of Luffy's imagination, as his ability allows him to turn his imagination into reality to a certain extent. Because he imagines himself as free, his body and abilities are rubbery and have infinite stretch. The number 56 is also of great significance here, as in Japan, the numbers translate into the words go and mu, referring to Luffy's gum-based abilities. While gum and rubber are two different things, with rubber being elastic and gum being malleable, Luffy's body has always exhibited the properties of both. In Gear 4, Luffy utilized an unnecessarily high amount of hockey to stabilize his forced awakening. This rendered him incapable of using his hockey for 10 minutes after his form ran out. Meanwhile, Luffy gets visibly older from tiredness after Gear 5 runs out, but in true cartoon fashion, he can bounce back quickly after he eats. This has always been a thing with Luffy, where he energizes right after eating, but Gear 5, being Gear 5, takes this ability to the max. Another, more significant depiction of his Toon Force is seen after he takes a blast of Top Man Warkiri's Conqueror's Hockey, which has enough power to blow everything away. In Luffy's case, it blows away his face and even his scars, and in one panel, we see him carefully place his now displaced scar back onto his chest, proving that no law of physics or nature apply to him. How has Gear 5 been foreshadowed in One Piece? Gear 5 is a huge transformation, and Luffy's fruit being something much different from a standard Paramecia rubber fruit is a huge plot twist. But it didn't come out of nowhere, and it's been foreshadowed from a very early stage in the story. Its most notable foreshadowing took place in the Sky Island Skypea, which was previously regarded as a detour arc and even disliked by many fans. After the reveal of Gear 5, however, we gradually realize that Skypea has been extremely important to the lore of One Piece. For starters, when the crew landed in Skypea, kind of, Luffy was seen bouncing on a bouncy cloud, similar to how he bounces on the rubbery ground when in Gear 5. When Luffy's fruit is revealed to be a manifestation of the sun god Nika in Wano, we see a shot of his silhouette in front of the moon. A very similar silhouette of Luffy's was shown in Skypea during a party they had with the wolves while Luffy was dancing around the bonfire. And long before the reveal of Gear 5, Oda had mentioned how that panel was his favorite. Of course, no one understood why Oda called it his favorite, but after Gear 5, everyone realized that it was a form of foreshadowing. Concepts such as the Sun God, the Rain God, the Forest God, and the Earth God were also revealed in this arc during the backstory of Noland, when a girl was being sacrificed to the gods at the sacrificial altar. To top that off, this arc is about fighting the god Enel, a false god who was terrorizing Skypea and its people. The actual god of the island, Ganfall, was also technically not a god. There were several moments throughout the arc where people asked God for help, a notable one being the girl Connus doing so, after which the panel shifted to Luffy, who eventually defeated Enel and punched him out of the thunderclouds while the sunshine seeped in. Wano ended on a similar note, with people from the flower capital sending out lanterns, praying to God to remove Kaido from Wano as the sky lit up with glowing lanterns as Luffy defeated Kaido and let the sun shine on their country once again. Next up, in Long Ring Long Land, the crew found themselves on a stretched out island where everything looked like they had been physically stretched out by someone. The animals were long, the horses were long, the apples and kiwis were long, and the trees were long. When asked why everything was so long, the sole person on this island, Tonjit, mentioned that everything was stretched out there as everyone was free. We now know that a user of the awakened Nika fruit can physically stretch out something they've touched. It's possible that during Joy Boy's time, he had, for some reason, caused everything on the island to stretch out. In fact, the island itself is a long stretch of ten islands, with the valley between each island being submerged under the seawater, quite possibly due to the rise of sea level. Because the fruit allows for cartoon physics, we see something very strange in Whole Cake Island. Following Sanji's beatdown of Luffy, the latter had lost a tooth. After he drank milk, however, the tooth visibly grew back, which shouldn't be possible in a shonen manga, considering shonens generally do hard world building, where the laws of physics within that verse explain why certain things are the way they are. In fact, this is why shonen power systems are generally detailed, because although having such supernatural abilities are unrealistic, they need to make sense within that universe. It wouldn't need to make sense in Ghibli or Disney, as those stories practice soft world building, where supernatural elements 
elements just exist, but One Piece doesn't fall into that category. In fact, what One Piece does is it introduces many factors without explanation, creating the ruse of soft world building, such as Shanks being able to scare off a sea king with a look, or Enel being able to sense who's defying him, following which he sends lightning down on. However, we eventually learn that Shanks did what he did with Conqueror's hockey, and Enel did what he did using a combination of observation hockey and his awakened lightning fruit. The same applies to Luffy's teeth growing back, as we are made to accept that his teeth just grew back, but with Gear 5, we understood why he has such an absurd anatomy. Next up, there's the deal with Luffy's fruit never having been a gum-based paramecia fruit, as it exhibited the properties of both rubber and gum, kinda like Hisoka's bungee gum. Doflamingo, Cracker, and Katakuri even mention, on seeing Luffy's movements in Gear 4, that he was doing things that rubber shouldn't be able to do. For example, Cracker commented on Luffy's tank man form, claiming that it was weird that it was soft and hard at the same time. Luffy's movements in Snake Man, where he zigzags to fight his enemy, has nothing to do with rubber, and Katakuri points that out. As we mentioned, we see Luffy doing the same thing with the lightning in Gear 5 against Kaido. The biggest giveaway about Luffy's fruit being a zone type, however, is the existence of gears. Every other Paramecia or Logia only has its base form and its awakened form. On the other hand, Chopper zone type human human fruit has points that he achieves with his rumble balls. Monster point, kung fu point, and the likes of it are similar to Luffy's gears, in the sense that these are momentary forms between the base and the awakened form of a zone, with the rumble balls in Chopper's case acting as his way of forcing an awakening. Is Gear 5 the final gear? Luffy has already mentioned that Gear 5 is his peak, so on the surface it seems like this is Luffy's final form. However, despite Luffy being ridiculously strong at the moment, he still faced challenges against the Gorose. By the time the final battle rolls around, Luffy will be fighting in the final war, and he seems to be destined to fight both Blackbeard and Emu. It's extremely possible that Emu is the most powerful character in the verse by a good margin, and considering Luffy did struggle once all the Gorose arrived on Egghead, he might need a power up against Emu. Against Black Beard, Luffy might even be in trouble despite his ridiculous powers because Blackbeard's Dark Dark Fruit can negate Devil Fruit abilities. As long as someone has Devil Fruit powers, they'd have troubles against Blackbeard's Vortex. With Luffy's forms being named after Gears, several fans have made connections between his transformations and the gears of a manually driven car. In such cars, however, there exists a final gear known as Reverse. Maybe Luffy might acquire something like that. Maybe Reverse Gear completely nullifies Luffy's Devil Fruit and allows him to fight using Using nothing but hockey, in which case he can get the upper hand on Blackbeard since hockey can negate Devil Fruit abilities. To top all that off, it's not confirmed, but it is believed that Laugh Tail exists underwater, which could partially be why several former members of the Roger Pirates move the way they do. For example, Shanks has a crew with no Devil Fruit users as they would be vulnerable to water. Crocus has found a way to live within a whale. Rayleigh coats ships in a way that allows them to travel underwater. Even the world government is making the tequila Wolf Bridge to connect the islands of the world together. If Laugh Tail exists underwater, this theorized reverse gear for Luffy might come in handy, but right now we can't do much but speculate. Marvelous Verdict Calling Gear 5 the best transformation of all time is a subjective opinion, but the unique nature of the transformation makes it one of a kind. Luffy is goofier than ever before, which is a big difference from the stoic, more serious transformations that shonen anime is used to, but it just feels so right because Luffy is goofy. He's fun. He's carrying the will of none other than Joy Boy, so it makes sense for him to laugh, be goofy, be funny, and spread happiness. Gear 5 is special because Luffy is an absolute cartoon in body and soul, and that is who he is when he's at his freest and at his peak. With that, today's video comes to an end. What did you think? Do you Want to hear more about Luffy's specific gears or other arcs in One Piece? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Until next time, this is Wheezy249 signing off, but you can always find me on Twitch. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.